Two attorneys who just won the landmark New York case on the Second Amendment at the Supreme Court have been rewarded by being pushed out of their law firm, told to ditch all their Second Amendment clients or leave the firm. So they left. Paul Clement, who served as U.S. Solicitor General from 2004 to 2008, and Aaron Murphy, who's argued multiple cases before the court, had been part of the New York-based law firm Kirkland & Ellis. They represented the plaintiffs suing to make it easier to get a concealed carry permit in New York. In Thursday's 6-3 decision, New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin, the court struck down the state's law requiring gun owners applying for a concealed carry permit to demonstrate what's called a special need for protection outside the home, saying that the law violated the Second Amendment's right to bear arms in the 14th Amendment. Now, apparently, the higher-ups at Kirkland and Ellis got some nasty phone calls from other clients and or employees, and they immediately caved. The same day. So rather than holding a party to celebrate the big Supreme Court win, they told the attorneys that the firm is no longer handling Second Amendment cases, and they'd, they would have to immediately drop all those clients or quit. Clement and Murphy announced that they would leave and form their own law firm. They will presumably take their clients with them. The attorneys wrote in an editorial in the Wall Street Journal, the law firm that got tired of winning, those who object to the representation are thus taking issue with the Constitution as interpreted by a majority of the high court. This happened to Clement before, by the way. He left an Atlanta-based firm in 2011 that was distancing itself from Clement's arguments in favor of the Defense of Marriage Act that banned benefits for same-sex couples. He lost that case. Now, I happen to believe that this gun permit opinion is narrow and not nearly as big a deal as many on the left are claiming. I also don't agree with the court's legal reasoning. But that should be irrelevant. Lawyers take on cases that can be unpopular. The firm wants to make it look like it's taking a principled stand. But the only thing it's standing for is hypocrisy. Are they going to give back the millions they made from these clients? If it's blood money, as they seem to believe, then they absolutely should. But they won't. The firm is just abandoning its clients. So I want to know, ethically, are they even allowed to do that? Joining me now is attorney David Leichman. He's founding partner of Leichman Law and a legal ethics expert. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. All right, so can they do this? Uh, well, they can if the client consents, but uh, we haven't heard that part of the story. And uh, as far as we know, it was a decision that was forced on the client rather than uh, the client being uh, involved in the decision. So typically, for a law firm to say, we're not going to represent you anymore, the client has to agree to it, right? And in this case, we, have, we don't know anything about whether they consulted with the clients because this happened in a day, right? The opinion comes down and boom, I, I should say maybe a, yeah, a day, the next day, Kirkland and Ellis is telling its lawyers, get out. Yes, well, we don't know if there was a discussion prior to that in, in anticipation of the decision coming down. And some in the legal community have speculated that uh, discussions might have started internally around the time of the Uvalde shooting. Do you think they got pressured by other clients or employees? And if so, which would be worse? Uh, I think, uh, well, from an ethical standpoint, it would be far worse if the clients uh, had pressured them, other, you know, other clients. Uh, their case law is very clear that you can't, uh, we call it the hot potato rule. You can't drop a client like a hot potato, especially at the request of other clients. H however, uh, you know, we also know that, um, you know, there's a very significant left-leaning bias in, in large law firms, and it's quite possible that other partners or associates or that there was a recruiting concern with the law schools that if they continued to work on these cases, they might be, uh, you know, they might be tarred and feathered, so to speak, uh, in, uh, in uh, the recruiting but, market. But, but again, this is only after the opinion comes, right? They've been working on this case for years, right? I mean, this has been years in the making. And then suddenly the court rules in their favor. So I guess if the court had ruled against them, they would have been able to stay at the firm maybe, right? If they had lost the case, maybe they would have been able to stay. Well, I think, I think the bigger issue is not so much the case that was specifically in front of the Supreme Court, which is now effectively completed, uh, although it may get remanded down to the, to the lower courts for further proceedings. But what Kirkland and Ellis was saying to the lawyers was, 
uh, you have to drop your other pending cases. So they have other cases for other individuals and other organizations right. who have been paying the law firm's bills. And the issue is in pending proceedings throughout the country, um, you can't just simply w walk away from a case without, in many cases, court uh, um, uh, approval, yeah. uh, client approval, and in some instances, you may also need the approval of your opposing counsel. I would just think, as a, as a, in its broadest uh, sense, that the notion of a law firm dropping its clients midway through and suddenly saying, we're no longer going to represent you guys is in and of itself problematic. No? That, 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 yes, that's the key. The key issue is the midway through uh, uh, language that you just used because it would be perfectly fine for Kirkland and Ellis to say, we don't want to take any future cases. We won't take on any new Right. cases, although that also could potentially be problematic depending on what their engagement letter with the clients said. Uh, but the cases that are pending already in front of courts, and in some cases, some of those cases have been pending for a number of years, that, that, is, uh, that is, would be a violation of the ethical rules, again, if the client doesn't consent. Yeah. David made me aware of this ethical quandary here. David Leichman, thank you very much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.